Welcome to the Throw Show. We got a special guest and uh, NCA All American Morgan Shago. Morgan, I am very thankful and grateful that you're here wearing the same sweatshirt as me. Because <laughs> you, you love me. Because you love yeah. me. <laughs> uh, so, Morgan is a thrower who trained with me since uh, what eighth grade or something? Ninth grade. Ninth grade. Two thousand ten. Yeah. yeah. So since two thousand ten. So for eight years, and. He, I think it's cool. I, I, one of the cool things that I get to see pretty regularly is that some of our our throwers will go on, and they as as much as I'm not like a super diehard Penn State guy, I did like going to school there, and it it is pretty neat that you you know that you went to school at where I graduated. I'd say you're a pretty big Penn State. I am, pretty <laughs> big, especially if we're talking about wrestling. So. Uh, I think he's, it's cool. He's there. He's at Penn State now. He's going into his fifth year. Um, I think he's going to have a huge breakout year, although you had pretty much two breakout years the past two years. I think this is going to be even bigger. Um, and he's also the first, (laughs) the first high school kid that gave me the middle finger and and like (laughs) sent sent me over the edge. (laughs) So I wanted to share this story right off the bat. Morgan was in like ninth or tenth grade, and we had just we got to the barn. <laughs> yeah, we had just moved into I, the barn. I was training with Anthony Animus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he used to drive me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I forget what I was yelling at him for. The sled pulls with that little crappy like yeah the rope like you, one you, inch rope where like, like you got splinters splinter. every single time you pulled on it. You had to wear you had to wear like workers gloves. Yeah. <laughs> Only the and, finest equipment. <laughs> and, and it was all chewed up because we used to pull it up the hill at the at my parents' house. <laughs> That's right. And I so, remember pulling like you had literally a sled. Yeah, a we plastic, had a plastic sled, sled, and you put dumbbells in this plastic sled, and we pull it <laughs> so up the hill. Like, who's pulling it? <laughs> it? Broke once. The, the sled broke, and he went flying. <laughs> but anyway, he's pulling the sled, and I'm yelling at him, <clears throat> like, "Come on, what are you doing?" And he like throws. He like. I just remember this. Throws the rope, looks at me, and he just goes. <laughs> and I was like, "Are you, dude?" I went, "Dude, oh. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified." <laughs> and then, like later on, like I want to say a couple, like three or four months later, he's like, "You know, I was like screwing around when I gave you the finger. I wasn't like being serious." <laughs> and I was like, "No, I was just curious." <laughs> like, so that's like that's like one of the one of the earliest memories is is him doing that to me. So I, I always like to share that. Um, Morgan, I don't know if you have any any response to, to that. That that's probably one of my favorite memories. Like just like <laughs> just like like because I'm not I wasn't I used to just like I like flipped you off and you just started freaking out on me. I was like I have no idea what to do right now. <laughs> like, like what's happening? Because because I will. I legit thought you were gonna fight me. I was 14 years old <laughs> and like you're just just like. Fat muscle head dude, just like in my face. I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> this With is the it. Deep in box yeah. of potato <laughs> chips. And I was like, this is it. I'm I'm gonna die right here now. I I think what's funny though is that, other than Trevor, I think I probably yelled at you one of the on the lower end. I didn't. I I learned early on me yelling at you just was not overly effective because you would just be like, ah, whatever. Yeah, I, I really get like frazzled by when people yell at no, me that no, much. No, you don't. Probably because you're dead. Yeah. So. Ex- exactly. I've been yelled at my whole life when I do something wrong. So it's just like, I'm just kind of used to that. And like, actually, I think that's why like our relationship was so well. Because like, you could get mad at me and yell at me and I wouldn't like shell up. Yeah, no. no like I would like, I would ta- I'd handle it and then I'd go do what you yelled at me for. Yeah. No, for sure. So that that's something too. Like it, what I want to do here with the podcast is sort of walk through um, your high school career and then getting into college and, and you know, just see where you're at now and, and, and where I think that you can be. And especially because we just had a good talk with McKay when we were out at the grand Valley about you from a technical perspective, but also you from a, from an, a development perspective. So I, I want everybody. And if you're listening on, on throws you, um, a lot of people will, will ask these questions like, you know, how, how far should we throw as a freshman or whatever? All the time we get these questions. And Morgan threw like 38 feet. 37.9 my freshman year. So 37.9 as a freshman. Now he's a Division One NCAA All-American. 
I think it's good for people here that 37 9 as a freshman is not. Dude, I think my first meet in my freshman year, I threw like eight meters. Yeah. I think I threw eight meters. It was like eight, like eight thirteen or something like that. Okay. So it's been a long, long road. road. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what I think everybody needs to hear is that it just it takes yeah. time. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it takes time. And I think, you know, going from that as a freshman, and it's not that that's a bad throw, it's, it's but it's not it's like a start. Jordan Guy's throwing sixty yeah, no, plus. I mean, that's a that's a one, maybe two in a generation thrower. Like, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not. I mean, most people are going to start out where I started out, probably even a little further. Because like, well, 20... so like, so you're there throwing thirty seven feet as a freshman. Like, like what's in your head at that point? Like, at that point, were you, were you? Like, I want to answer this because I think it, I that... want to be. I want to be a Division One All American. Like, is that no, what you're thinking? thinking? Like, I, I know you weren't football. thinking Dude, that, but like, I was. Like, what was going through your head at that point in your? Like, I just your life? so like how okay so how my throwing career started. My so it was kind of like a fate story. Uh, my eight, in eighth grade, my you last playing baseball. Yeah, I, was, I played baseball from age four that. until yeah. eighth grade. My last middle school baseball practice, I was I played outfield and then I played first base when I when my friend would pitch, and I was like, hey, let me get one more rep because he was pitching and we were doing bunt drills. And I was like, let me get one more rep. That rep the, of my last practice in middle school baseball, the the ball went across the line. My friend ran through my arm, snapped my arm right in half, and I was like, and then I sat the bench for all summer baseball. I was like, this is boring. I was like, yeah. and I was like, let me try track. Let me just see what see what happens. And then I went out for track, and then that's when I was like, all right, I threw thirty seven feet. I think the I think the, whatever the meet before is counties. I threw thirty seven feet. And I was like, okay, like. Yeah. But then I was like, I saw you, and who else was with you? Who else? Evan tra- Hayes. Evan, yeah, Evan. Yeah, Evan Hayes. I'm like, okay. So these, wait, would you would have been a? Were you a freshman when I was a senior? That that so. My out? freshman year would have been yeah. Two, what, you graduated in two thousand eleven. Yeah. Yeah, that was my freshman year. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it was funny story. Like my memory, or one of my early memories of throwing was counties. It was raining. I was I was out. I was sitting, like with Dane at like the edge of the sector. You threw like I think you had like a fifty two foot throw or something like that. I was like I just like walked. I was like Yo, Dane, you think you can he could throw that from a stand? And Dane just looked at me. He's like, Shut the fuck up, dude. Go <laughs> go away from me. Like, <laughs> I can see that. Too. That's, yeah, I just just, just like, cause like I didn't I don't really think about anything because like I, until like my senior year, like end of junior year, senior year, like I football was I was gonna play football yeah. in college. So I was just gonna follow my dad's footsteps, play football, and ride I it feel out. Like and then junior year, I feel like junior year, you I mean sophomore year, what did you throw? You threw like forty three. Yeah, so forty three as a sophomore, and like one twenty or something. Some, yeah, I think one like one night I threw. 43-7 and one, I think, like, 119, maybe. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I'm still not very good. I was still training all the time. I was like, okay, this is just kind of, like, something to do for fun in the spring. Yeah, and I think I think that's the big thing is that you were coming in all the time to lift. So between three and five days a week, you come in to lift, and throwing was just like this – side project that we would throw maybe Sundays and then one other day during the week. But I felt like your junior year of football, you did pretty well, but was that when you hurt your ankle? No, no, that, that was, was that was senior year. No, but like junior year, like I did, I had like a, like breakout, like the last two games. I was like, cause I got switched to defensive tackle, defensive yeah. end. And I had like a breakout two games. I was like, Oh, okay. And I'm starting to get a little bit more attention in football. And then like, the fr- it was the first meet, the Dickinson meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we started training, like, we, we were training outside. It was, like, 45, 46. Like, and then, like, Dickinson meet, just out of nowhere, I think, like, 50 feet. And yeah. I was, like, okay. And like, that was as a junior. Yeah. I was, like, okay, this is kind of 50 feet. Like, and, 50 feet's exciting. Like, and Kuhn yeah. and, and Evan, Evan were throwing well yeah. at that point. And I, th- I think that was a big thing that I saw was that you sort of saw what they were doing, and it was like, okay, like yeah. now I see they're they're doing well, they're getting a lot of attention, and maybe I'll take this a little bit more seriously. And I that's that's when I felt like you started to train, even lifting wise in general, because I remember like that that video you front squat in three fifteen. Yeah, sophomore year. Yeah, like just and then you cleaned your junior year, you cleaned one fifty off of a box, I think it was. In, yeah, in, in trainers and in sneakers. In sneakers. <laughs> And that's one thing that's I want to point out <clears throat> with Morgan is that I think it's it's so weird because 
you see freaks like early on. Like you'll be like, okay, that like Nicholas mm. is a freak. Like he's yeah. he's a freak from day one. Yeah. You're like he's a stud. Morgan to me, his freakiness didn't come out till like like he always knew he was athletic. He had like maybe some mobility issues, but not horrible. But then junior year, it was like, <clears throat> man, he's a freak. Like he just comes in and just cleans three thirty like out of nowhere, and you're like, okay, this kid is just a random thrower and football player. But by that point, I, I felt like you had started to mature and your freakiness blows up. And then that's when I was started. When you hit that, I remember thinking like, dude, this kid could be like legit. Yeah. If he would freaking come in and throw <laughs> more than two days a week. <laughs> yeah. It goes back to like, I think when I first came in to like the original garage, like in your parents' garage, Yeah. I did, <clears throat> my first goal was, like you said, I'll give you a T-shirt if you get, like it was like I had like a year goals. If you get the sixty fives dumbbells for one, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, I came in, I like, and I did like, I did the, I did bench for ninety five, ninety five pounds on the bench as a freshman for like two and a half reps, <laughs> and like I just like squatted the bar. Like it was like my first workout, and I think I went home like I couldn't like sit down, like like after squatting the bar, like I was like so weak when I first came in, but it was, I mean, it's it's been very long, like yeah, and then, like you said, like <clears throat> freshman sophomore year, I, I was kind of building up and then like junior year was like kind of like what happened I, and i think that mm -hmm. that's something too where even people on the outside started to notice because that was when i was posting like sunday throws videos and they started to notice who's the big dude who can move and and mm -hmm. i think and jason will 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 um make fun of me for this i had multiple people including him say that you're going to be you could be the best hammer thrower. You'd be the best hammer thrower. And I would be like, no, to shut be, up. To be clear, I said that. Okay, so no, Trevor no, I can, and Jason I can, did. I can and Jason. agree with that because <laughs> the only knowledge I had of hammer before I went to college was, I think, was it John Hart? Yeah. yeah he yeah. had like two hammers yeah. in in the bar. In the and, I, right. and I was like, yo, Dean, you want to teach me how to like, how to do this? He's like, no, shut up. Go outside and try. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think from, from my perspective, to be fair to me, <laughs> I still believe Morgan could have been like a stupid good shot putter, like twenty one <laughs> meter shot putter. It. I'm gonna drop it. <laughs> and 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 discus. I mean, but junior year you threw one seventy in disc. One one sixty five. Okay, so 160. almost one seventy. And then and you had a massive foul junior year though at state. At state was probably that was like one eighty Max, plus. Yeah, I was Max like one eighty plus, yeah. and Max Adams had like a two hundred foot foul. Yeah, because like, it was, but it was like pouring. Yeah, I, I remember, remember that. That's when I was okay. He had Dude. when you had that huge foul. I was like, this might get him. Dude, and we started training for because uh, I made emerging elite for yeah. disc, yeah, yeah. and I was like the whole week like leading up, I was like getting close to like the fence at the top of the hill. Yeah. Then I went to the nationals at like one thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, Dude, screw this. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But I think, you know, going into your senior year of high school, you, you I mean, your high school football year, you just tore it up. You yeah. just destroyed everybody. You had, like, 20 sacks. I'm pretty sure that was, like, the only year that I ever remember Fleetwood having a good team. Yeah, it was yeah. my year, and the year after was the only time we ever had a winning record. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, indoors, you threw well in the shot. Um, so like 58 low. Yeah. Yeah. I at Monmouth, didn't you throw like yes, yeah. yeah, at Monmouth, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. I remember at, at the one Monmouth meet was like real, real intense. Jason threw well there. I threw decent. Um, but then going into outdoors, you throw, you get fourth in in uh, discus. I think you threw like one seventy four or something, one seventy eight. Yeah, so, yeah, like one seventy four. And I remember there was one training session you had like. 63 to 65 foot throws in the shot. Easy, yeah. And, and you were just smashing every single throw. You ended up throwing, I think your PR, though, was only ever 58-9. Or... Yeah. Dude, I would murder <laughs> things in, in practice. Like, it would, it was, it came easy. That I just got, like, stressed out, and Meads could never, could never hit it. Yeah. Well, isn't that, I mean, just from when I was talking to you a little bit ago, isn't that kind of the opposite of where you are right now? Yeah, it's like the complete opposite. And, like, I'm so glad that it's come to that, because, like, in Hammer... I mean, that's a better place to be, Yeah, it's a sure. way better place <laughs> yeah. to be. Like, yeah. Hammer, like... I don't. We don't throw the seven two six very often, but like when we do, like if I can throw it, like my PR seventy two mid. If right. I can throw the sixteen between sixteen and sixty four in a practice, that's like I'm ready to go. Yeah, you're in good. Like shape. if I'm within like that's, eight to ten meters of my PR, like that's big. 
dude, that's nuts. Like, I don't, like, I'd never, that's probably my practice PR with the 16 is probably like 64 or 65. I, I think that's the thing, though, is that early on, everybody saw you had a motor and everybody knew mm. you could move and you got good speed, you have good awareness. And that's also like, okay, even on the football field, you know, you were quick and you had, you had good movement. So it's sort of like, that's always been there and everybody I mean not always but the junior senior year it really came out yeah. and then everybody started to see that and I think you know when you were getting recruited that's what I just kept telling everybody like dude this kid is a could be the the a big like the next big thing um and that's where it's like you go to college and you you pick up you pick up the sh- or the hammer and you've still thrown like 17 meters at this point in in the shot. Yeah, I threw. I think at my true version, I threw like 16 meters again. And then like at at the meet, you showed up like two minutes, like two minutes yeah, to yeah. warm up. Yeah, I had like a 17 low foul, and yeah. I was like, okay, I can still kind of be a shot putter. Like that's still like in the cards. That was meet Darrell went like 2080. Yeah, yeah, it was the meet. Uh, everyone was asking where you were, and I was like, don't worry, he'll show up 15 minutes late and have to scramble to warm up and here you go you show up you, show, you showed up 15 minutes late and like jumped in like you With were like his coffee really, and his coffee he was like sweating like just like let me get in line i gotta i gotta need two throws i'm ready to go oh geez why am i so predictable that's so bad no nothing was worse than the germantown meet oh. when uh you yeah. took you were like you were warming up with the 20 and you're like you were murdering. You were throwing like 18 meters. Dude, that was the best and day it, of my dude, life. You were for like, you were like, you were like Dane, just stop throwing. Like it was like an hour until the competition. And he's just like, no, dude, like I feel so good right now. He's like, he's, I think he took like 18 throws, like with full 20, throws with a 20. With yeah, a 20. Yeah. And he threw like, then he threw like 17. I threw 1777. He threw like 1650 with a 20. Yeah. Yeah. He took, yeah, he took like 20 reps. Yeah. Dude, I was just killing those throws. That's probably my PR with the twenty is from that day. I think so, yeah. Dude, I was just smashing my throws in. But those, dude, those were those meets were fun. They were fun. They were fun. They were fun to travel to. Yeah. So I guess you know going into college, I, and and this is this is good for anybody who's who has no idea about hammer is that you really you 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 were mildly exposed to it, and then by sophomore year you threw what sixty two or sixty two eighty at Penn Relays. I got through. So I feel like 53 my freshman year, I skipped it off the ground at Maryland and just threw it and threw it. Like my PR was like 53. Yeah. And then the day before that, the Jim Thorpe meet that you came up to, I was throwing like 58, 50, 59. I was like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to hit big and then I'm going to go to like, like whatever, like the U.S. Juniors meet or whatever. Yeah. And it was like the first day I wore a cutoff shirt. I got like third degree sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> like I had, I had blisters like all oh my over my, God. like I got into the circle to wine. I was like, I like couldn't move. They're like, they're like, they're like 41 meters. <laughs> yeah. I, really I, cool. I think what ends up being, what, what, you know, what ends up being cool is like, so 62, 80 as a, as a sophomore. And, and is, I was like 44th in the region. So I made it to first rounds. Okay. My, okay. my redshirt freshman year. And I feel like 62 meters. I went like foul, 62 foul. And but then like, it was my first time ever being in a big meet. It was so cool. good. Yeah. yeah. So 62, 80, then now walk us through, you know, that transition from sophomore into junior, or your redshirt freshman into sophomore year. Redshirt. Like, what did you, so, well, so what did you end up focusing on most that you felt like really blew you up? Go like for a sophomore year? Yeah. The, so like that summer was the year that uh, Coach Evo got fired. Yeah. yeah. So like, I, my whole summer was just like, whirlwind of like things happening. I remember you calling me. I was at the Olympic trials. Yeah, I had no idea what to do. Like I was thinking of transferring. I I was was in a Trader Joe's. I still remember this so vividly. I was in a Trader Joe's and Morgan's calling me and I like you were at home and I was like, uh oh, something happened at the gym. So I picked up and you're like, they fired Pat. And like I was like, oh my God. Like and then I had to like sit there and say like you know, I don't care why. I don't care about anything like that. I wanted to just say to you, like, they'll figure it out. They'll get somebody in there. And and you were saying, you know, should I transfer? Should I do? What should yeah, I do? I have no and idea what to it, do. And it was more like, I need to be walked off the edge. Yeah, yeah, big time. And and for me, you know, I'm in Portland, or yeah, I was in Portland actually at the time. 
And I actually, I think I went out to Caitlin and talked to her about it. And I'm like, what do you think I should say to him? And she was like, well, just wait and see. Like, wait and see what happens. See who they can bring in and, and see see what the, the thought process was. And, and by that point, because I was at the Olympic trials, it was it was sort of like buzzing around all the coaches. And I remember talking to like three or four people. Um, one of them was actually Denard mm-hmm. and Nick Price. And then talking... Um, just a whole big group of coaches and then trying to see who's going to apply for the job. Yeah. You know, who wants that job? Are they going to pay decent enough? Is it, is it somewhere that they, that they want to go or not, you know? And, and I want to say within like a month and a half, it, it started to come back that they were going to hire, that they were looking into at least hiring Lucas. Yeah. It was actually cool. Like the way that Penn State did it, like they brought, there was like six or seven of us student athletes on like a panel. And we we interviewed each candidate, just us. Yeah, really? so like, yeah, cool. that was that was cool because I know it wasn't like okay, we have to sit here and wait and see who they. But like, so like, we actually were like the main of main it. decider of who we wanted mm-hmm. to get hired. Yeah. So like, when McKay came in, he was like our he was our fourth interview. Like immediately after the interview, we called. We were like, we want this guy. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. we want we want uh, McKay to be our coach for like we want because like he came in. He's pretty much he when he was at OK he was who at OK State. They, who, who else did they bring in? Um, <laughs> they brought in Z, uh, Zion. Uh, they brought in. Um, uh, he's, at, he's at he's at Wake Forest now. Uh, tra- or, uh, I can't remember his name. No, the Wake guy's at at Purdue now. <laughs> um, he just got the job at Purdue. I can't. He was at Indiana before. Yeah, that's Mo's coach. Um, yeah. Black dude. Yeah, like buff dude. Yeah. What's his first name? Tar- uh, they, yeah, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, And they brought in, <clears throat> he was at, he said Townsend, the Townsend coach. And then there's, and then I forget who the fifth, the, fourth, the other one was. But like, it was like, they're all like a solid group of, yeah. Like, a, I mean, they're not going to bring in anybody to for the Penn State job. Like, that's it's. Right. Um, like we're no like it's that throws like it's much as like an eight hundred school, but like there's a lot of throwers that come. Dude, what from was there. weird I, yeah, for, the, yeah. for for me was that Lucas called me before they like told everybody that he got the job, and he and what the reason being, he called me to be like, I'm taking the job at Penn State. What do you think I should do about Jocelyn because she's at Oklahoma State? Like how yeah. how can I handle this and not be a complete turd? Mm. And I was just like, dude, you just got to tell her. Just bring her in and be like, I got to take this. It's, it's best for me, for my professional career. And then, I, so in one sense, I was like, yeah, that sucks. But then in the other sense, I'm like, hell yeah, this is somebody that could blow you up. Yeah. Because of where you were at and knowing his background with, with Hammer, that's where I was like, dude, this is like the best case scenario for you. So it was sort yeah. of weird, yeah, strange set of, of, of events from my perspective because I'm sitting there like, wow. That sort of sucks, but at the same time, it doesn't because... It's of, like a win-lose for yeah. you, no matter what you say kind right. of thing. Yeah. But like, he came in, he was like, pretty much closed the door behind him at Oklahoma State. Like, there was no going back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, hey, if I don't get this job, like, I'm going to... He was like, I, I do, like, some nonprofit throws things. Like, I would still be in the throwing community, and we're like, oh, like, this guy seems, like, super dedicated and passionate about throwing. Mm-hmm. And, like, we had really... I didn't know too much about, like, who exactly he was. And before, like, we did, like, our research. Yeah. But, like, he just came in and, like, it just, like, he just seemed like he'd be, like, the fit for, like, our group. Like, he seemed yeah. like he would, like, mesh real well. And, like, obviously, it was the right choice for us. Yeah, because like, he's torn it up. Yeah. And I think, I feel like everybody's doing well. Javelin, you know, shot, discus, and, and you know, I mean, and hammer. Since he's been there, he's had an athlete in every event, except for, I think, what, women's disc go to nationals okay wow so i guess yeah so so and wait and women's well so like i mean this is something that happens like to a ton of throwers you know unfortunately like yeah and it happens a lot yeah like it happens a lot and you know what can you like what was your experience like that one and a half months when you didn't know you were gonna have a coach and like do you have any words of wisdom for like people who are going through that same thing just just see how it plays out don't do don't make any rash decisions like like the first the first thing that i was thinking about was like okay transfer like 
where am I going now? Like, because like I was like, they're gonna hire someone who I'm not gonna mesh with. Because like when you get recruited, you like you go for the school, but you also go for the the coach because you're like, mm-hmm. okay, I like this guy the best out of whoever's recruiting me. Mm-hmm. So it, it was just like, all right, now that my whole world's been flipped upside down because now that guy's not here anymore. Someone's gonna come in, we might not mesh, but. Like just like write it out, stay in contact with like your head coaches and stuff, and just like be like, hey, like who who are you hiring? Not who you're hiring, like who are you interviewing? Like what are their, where have they come from? Like what have they done before? Like don't yeah. don't overthink it. Like I did. Like I was mm-hmm. I was a mess for probably about two weeks, just like stressing over everything. Like I didn't want to do anything. I was like, and then because it was like it was like middle of the summer. Like so we just we were like just mm-hmm. out. Like it was like it was like yeah during trial. So like it was like. Yeah. And and less than less than a month removed from first round, so it's right. like I just got back from being with this guy for a whole week traveling, yeah. And now he's not my coach anymore. Like yeah. some guy that like he's like I mean when you when you think when you find a coach you try to find like another father figure like that's yeah. like when, like it's because like it's gonna be your dad away from your dad right because like you're you're gonna see him more often than your parents, mm-hmm. but hmm. I, I, yeah like I'd say like don't stress about it like you can't you can't control it. And just like hope for the, like hope for the best, and if it, if it doesn't work out, then then you go like give them give the new coach at least a year to prove themselves to you, and then they see if your relationship works out. Right. Because yeah. like you like you never know. Like with with me, like like Coach McKay and I, we have a great relationship. Like he's probably like taken he's taken me ten meters further to where like from where I started out with him. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just like. <clears throat> give whoever they hire a chance. That if that was my advice, give whoever they hire they have a chance. That's the thing too yeah. is like going in. So so that first year, you know, if you if you go fast forward, you went from sixty two eighty to sixty eight, sixty seven ninety four. I was so mad. At and you <laughs> and I made USA. You made U.S. Senior Nationals as a, what twenty twenty one year old. So, yes. Yeah, Thing I was, yeah, I was 20 because like, I couldn't. Yeah, because I like, think I remember. That's when I came back from Japan and I wanted to drink with you, but you're I like, could, nah, I could. I'm still 20. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so I guess walk walk us through that whole year of it's a new system. And like, what was the biggest thing that you focused on? Dude, we, Michaela, like, I was like, because like, I'm like 6280, it's a retro freshman. Like, you know, I'm going to be, I'm like, I have a little bit of ego to me now. I'm like, all right, yeah. I can be something. And he came in and was like, your form's terrible. <laughs> like he just literally like, straight up like talking he's like dude your form's awful like, I, and I was like okay yeah. so he's like we're gonna four turn it's gonna be bad but we're gonna that's what we're gonna do I was like so I'm I was four turning like for I couldn't like I was just getting mad because like toe turns completely different than just going right into three heels yeah and like that was like the focus was basically just like trying to do an entry for like three months and like every thrower knows like if you're doing one drill for a like, week it's infuriating, like just yeah. like, but it was just like it was a long process of like trying to figure out a four turn. Like even like now, like it's not that good, but like that, like, it was just that's what we focused on was four turning. Yeah, but like, he, dude, he could have been sitting there, and and this goes back to what he had said at one point to me about with Babbitt. It was like Babbitt was like a year and a half. They did something, and he would just be like, no, nope, do it again, no, nope, do it again, yeah. and then all of a sudden that, it clicks, and he way. wins the NCAA title, and it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. Dude, I think with you, he's not sitting there going like, "Okay, like let's let's." The amount get of times I asked him to let me go back to three turning that year, because like, my we opened up Arizona State. I threw like I threw two hundred feet on the nose. I'm just like, okay, I'm two meters less than where I ended last year. Like, let me go back to three turning. I bet you I can throw it real far. He's like, I bet you you could, but you're not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like yeah. that whole year was just, <clears throat> I went like sixty ninety six, and I went like sixty two. And then I went, I had PR'd at Bucknell, I went like 64, and then 65, 65, then I had like a, a lesser meet. And then I went to UVA, it was, yeah, it was always was my breakout meet these past two years. I went 66, like 66, 90 or something like that at UVA, and I was like, broke the school record. And then... Dude, I, I forgot he has big, a Penn State record. And then at Big Tens, I went, 60, <laughs> I went 67, 94, and I was like... What's happening? Like I like I wasn't like I went from sixty two eighty not making a Big Ten final, to where I had the lead going to round five until Joe uh, Ellis went and hit seventy in round six. And I was yeah. like, okay, so I didn't make a final, and now I'm second place in the Big Tens. Right. Yeah. Wow. And then I was I think I was seventeenth or eighteenth going into first rounds. It was, I'm trying to think where where that put puts you. You didn't make NCAs that year, though. No, I got. I got fifteenth. I feel like sixty five something. What right. would it? What would have made it then? 
Did if I would have thrown a, like a, like sixty six something, really, I would have made it. It was it was it wasn't that far that year, but there was a lot was of people steep. like sixty five to yeah. sixty seven. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think what what ended up working out well though was you make USA's and you threw pretty well at USA's. Yeah, I, ended up, I threw I my third best throw of the year. I threw it was like sixty six high. Right. Yeah. So you leave that you know you leave your I was I was the number one like collegiate like returning collegiate at, yeah. at USA's. Mm-hmm. You know, so you leave that meet and it's almost like. Your whole year, then you're like, okay, I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm heading into in, in a pretty good position. And I yeah. think that that's where I'd say, like, what was the next? You know, last year's focus it was all, okay, figuring out the four term. Yeah, that fig- was, figuring that was out that time. entry. Is it still like going into last year? Then was it all still focusing on that entry and just hammering that out? I'm still focusing on the entry. I'm, st- <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. See, that that's the that's the nuts like, it's thing. It's been from two years of like trying like, to figure it out. You still haven't figured it out, but yeah. you've thrown yeah. <laughs> seventy three meters. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's what it, like going back to that, that's the most frustrating ask, thing about throwing. Like everyone wants instant results, and people will yeah. ask us yeah, these yeah. questions. Yeah. All what the can time. I do to it's fix like, it? Yeah, yeah, you gotta do it for two years. You want to mm-hmm. be an NCAA All American? You want to be one of the best collegiate hammer throwers in the country? And I would argue the number one highest potential coming out of college this year is you mm-hmm. and. That's what you're doing. Two years of this. Maybe just three. The entry. Like yeah. just like figuring out how to get the ball but going. Now now let's see where he's at, where you're at in twenty twenty. Yeah. You know? But I mean it's all that like as you're working on technique, like it's almost like the distance or is like lagging behind where your like technical development is going, like each meet. Like it's kinda of lagging behind, but then all at once and it just like this is what's hopefully like I think it's already happened, but it's probably gonna happen again because you're still working through all this stuff, is that in all one big swoop, it's just going to catch way up. Yeah. You're going to hit your positions, and it's going to be a monster throw. You and me are hoping for the same things here. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it's like the throwing is like it's everything so tedious. If you miss something by a centimeter, it's all it's done. Yeah. Especially yeah. like like yeah. especially in hammer, like the entry. If you miss your entry, the re- the next three turns are they're, they're going to be they're going to yeah. be trash. Yeah. And like, I think yeah, th- this is something too that if we could harp on it is. Yes, you're physically gifted and you're strong as hell. You've cleaned 410 or 405. 405. You're one of the freakiest strength athletes that that I've ever worked with. Um, I mean, I haven't, you know, not that I've trained you now, but like when you come back to the gym and I see you and you're hanging out and and lifting, like you're still just a freak. But the fact that all he's talking about right now is like, if I'm off by a centimeter, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. the priority isn't in the weight room. The priority no. is mm-hmm. you could be, you know, you could, hits, you could bench 500 pounds and, and squat a thousand, but if you don't have like technique. the functional strength and the technique, it's, yeah, yeah. it's all for not. Like, yeah. And then that's, that's, that's what's good. And that's why I think even more so with you is the potential is so much higher because you've got the strength, like you, you're going to get it even more. And, and the strength program solid that you're on and everything's developing properly you're investing in the technical side and and McKay's investing in you with yeah. from the technical side and that's where it's like you know last year you that's what the focus was 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 continue to build that technique and I'm sure that's where you're going this year yeah mm-hmm. with you know it's e- it, it, it's easier to get somebody strong but it's not easy to get somebody technically sound unless yeah. Yeah. they it are invested in it. <clears throat> and it's frustrating where, yeah like and I think I think Morgan is like a very good example of this is that there's, there tends to be, and this is kind of in multiple different sports and it comes back to like um, the private sector and how like, you know, some people for some reason tend to value or devalue athletes who are already trained well in like a system prior to going into college. And I think you're a prime example for multiple different reasons of why that's not true. And I think one is because you like, you start now. I know this isn't in the hammer. You were a shop shop putter, but you still had a more a bigger foundation in technical understanding going into college, and you know that kind of helped to pave the way a little bit for how you you know tech, take technique and and develop your technique and and you know are transforming into an elite thrower. Whereas someone who just came in with nothing, you know, yeah, sure they might have a really big spike initially. But that long-term development, technically, I feel like that that foundation isn't isn't there, you know. 
Yeah, yeah um, I agree with that one. I mean, I also agree with it because... Because that's who you are. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what you do. I mean, keep buffing me up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's completely true, though. And, like, I can't... Like, coaches, I all, coaches shouldn't devalue someone because they have mm-hmm. a bigger training age. That should be even more incentive to, to go after them because they're... They're they, further along on the curve. Of yeah, the and, I think and, you got to look at attitude, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah you, get, you get some guys like, oh, like I tra- like I'm the best. I do. I, I, I trained with Dane. Like mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing. Like you can't tell me uh, left from right. I already know it. Like yeah, no, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, do what I'm gonna sure. do. Like that, like yeah, those yeah. kind of kids. Like yeah. they're not gonna. I don't think are gonna 100%. succeed as well because they're gonna. They're not gonna. They're not because like you're one guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many other minds that that different thoughts and like could like you could you have your focuses and then like another guy be like hey like fix this he could go any further like right. you have to be like, like i said you have to be open to other things you can't just like all right i, I know it from here so now i'm just gonna do what i've been doing and not let you right, help me right. i think right. that's where like some kids who are like come from like these bit like um mm-hmm. from like garage strings but like long and strong mm-hmm. or like uh throw in deep like these clubs mm-hmm. like some kids come out and they're like they're really they're good but arrogant. they never they're too yeah they're too arrogant they don't yeah, listen yeah. to anybody yeah. yeah and that's where like it's it's the skills you need to take the skills that you learned in that system and be able to apply them to, yeah. to the new system like, that you're technical like, learning like, is yeah, a skill. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of, right, like exactly. a lot of kids yeah. from these groups, like they're going to be, if you get them in the right next system, they're going to be great throwers. Like yeah. they're like, mm-hmm. like if they have that platform, like, like I said, like from like the long and strong, the throw in deep here, right. like they have, we have this platform now and we're like lucky to be around you guys and like learn from like some of the, like the best minds in the throwing community. Mm-hmm. But like if you go in and like, that's all you want to know and you don't want to expand like yeah, that's right. where you're gonna find problems. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I guess I I want to know. So you, I, I think one of the the most exciting points from from me, especially now as like the the outsider slash more like fan of, of you is like you, he goes to NCAs last year and you know you you make it through first round. And NCAs is stacked like the best. I I think the best hammer comp. <laughs> ever in the history of the NCA. Um, and you got sixth place, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And and I just remember we were watching it up at the front. Uh, Noah had it. Noah had it up. Noah Kennedy White had it. He just threw 60 meters indoors. Um, Beast. <laughs> so he had it up, and we were just, you know, like, following it. And I think Rachel brought it and, like, actually had the, the live feed of it. And so we were we had the updates and the live feed, and it was like, was it your third throw that you got into the finals on? No, I, my first no, your throw. your first throw, you but ripped. My first throw, I, I got through 70-97. Yeah. My second throw, I I missed it and I fouled. My third throw, I threw like 70-23. But like my third throw, like I was like, I missed it. I was like, and that still went, like it landed and it went 70 meters. I was like, wow, today's. Could be something special. Like yeah. I missed these. I missed every single throw in these. Your six throws throw, when you went yeah. seventy two. Yeah. Yeah. My fourth throw, I I think I fouled my fourth throw going like in finals, and then me and a kid from Florida, AJ um, AJ McFarland, we were like he then he PR'd. And I was like, all right, all right. He's like right before me, and we were, like, we were kind of like it's like, and that's another thing with the throws community, like with throwers, like. It will feed off each other. We feed off each other, like yeah, and like yeah. we like we're rooting for each other. Like there's no there's no like beef between us. Like everyone's rooting for each other because like, if someone throws far, like you're gonna want to throw farther. Like it's not yeah. like oh dude, don't throw far so I can beat you. Yeah, like, right. Throw far, <laughs> like, push me. So like yeah, yeah. he PR'd, and then my fifth throw I threw seventy two forty, and then he PR'd again on his sixth throw, but it was it was just short of mine. I was like oh dude, I got you. Like we were like, like now we have like we have a cool relationship now. But then I threw my last throw. <clears throat> 7247 and then like I was my first throw that there's 72 I went four at one point you were I was like in fourth yeah that's what I was and then the fourth. kid from uh honors Erickson through 74 75 that's the LSU kid no that that's Jake Norris okay he's a, he's a Florida kid okay. um and then Daniel Hall yeah. through like 70 I think 72 high or 73 and then I was like all right I gotta like do something and I, thought, I think I, I was just like four centimeters further than my last throw, but it was kind of cool to like end on a PR. Right. Yeah. So how intense, how intense was that, that competition? Like when everybody's going back and it forth? It was wild. And, like it was, it was more wild. Cause like I threw like going in. So like going in, 
And how do you deal with the stress? Like it was like I was like just trying to like eat granola bars. Like my stomach was just like because like I because I was because I was so fat. Oh, you're so fat. He's got granola bars in his pocket right now. Dude, I wish. I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> no, like it's like going in. Like I was, I was a tenth in the East yeah. and eleventh in the country. Yeah. Fun fact: the top nine at uh, nationals were all East. Everyone, really? Everyone was from the East. Oh, I didn't even realize all that. All nine. All nine from the so East. So they should just get rid of the wings. It was, well, everyone. <laughs> For hammer. And, well, well, Gleb didn't make the final. He's a 78-meter oh, right. yeah, guy. Yeah. But, like, that's what it, like, like, sitting there through 70, 97, I'm just like, any other year, I'm chilling somewhere, and I'm not worrying about it. I'm well, going to make the final. Thinking... And then I was like, because, like, the, there's, there's uh, six guys from the East that are going to, because I'm in, I was in, I was in second because behind, uh, I was behind Jake Norris. He threw like 74, 73 in prelims. Yeah. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, so there's six guys from the East who should throw farther than that. And there's at least one dude from the West. who's glad who should throw yeah. further. So like if everything goes how it should, I'll get, I'll be in ninth or like eighth. Like. Yeah. What if there's two wild cards that just throw right, far? It just so but it's like 70, 97, like any other year. I would have been like, okay, let me stay warm. Dude, I swear the year before that, Alex Young got second and it was like 71 meters. Yeah. I, I don't think, I think your mark would have been better than him. And he's a savage. Yeah, no, he's probably, he's one of the best American hammer throwers right now. Right, but it was like, that's how deep this year's. Dude, yeah, and it was, it was just, just sitting there, like I was sitting under a tent because it was, it was so sunny. So does does McKay give you anything that like calms you down? Is it his personality that just calms you down, or was it you just eating granola bars that helped? You <laughs> no, like he was talking. He was like, "Dude, you're gonna make it. You'll be fine." Like, I don't, I don't believe him. I was like, <laughs> I was like, "Dude, I'm not gonna make this final. I just threw like almost my PR. Like, I'm not gonna make this thing." Yeah. And I was just like, I'm. Just, I was like, stressed. Like, I'm technically you're seated. Like, even because like Joe didn't. Joe Ellis didn't make it. So technically, I'm tenth. I'm yeah. seated tenth technically. Yeah. So like, if everything goes perfect, I'm out. Like I'm right. ten. Right. So I'm like, oh my god. Well, going back to first rounds, I had went sixty three. So I was in like twenty eighth. Yeah. And then I went sixty four. Oh my! So you only get three throws in yeah, yeah, first yeah. rounds now for yeah. people who don't know. Yeah. Second throw, I went sixty four. I was in nineteenth place going into my third throw. And I just like looked over at McKay, and he was just like, "I don't know what you're doing." Like I was just like, li- like literally, like my four, like I was just like, <laughs> "What's happening?" Like, <laughs> like, w- like I'm so I have one throw left. It was just like I re- I did it uh, compared it to states my senior year in discus, discus where I, I had two fouls. Yeah, dude, that was bad. <laughs> but then I got then I threw like 67. I made it. I was tenth going in, so like I had to go throw in the first flight. Like, you have to be top six from yeah. each region to go to make it to the yeah. second flight. So like and now I'm sitting there. I'm in second place. I was like, okay. Like I'm not even watching because there's a screen there, but like they didn't have a throwing event on there, so it's just just the running events that were on the TV. It was like the 10k. Yeah, it was like the 10k <laughs> or like it's just something that like took way too long. He could have like popped into other places, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. I'm just listening. Like all because like where I was sitting, like, where the tents were, like like this is the ha- this is the hammer ring, and like the tents were like back here, and there was like trees. Yeah. So like the only spot where there was shade was like way back, so I couldn't see the ring. So I'm just like, I was just listening. Like like every time the crowd cheered, I was like, oh, oh god, shit. there's another. <laughs> <laughs> you like have it like etched yeah. on like one, <laughs> two. No, but then so then I was in sixth or seventh. I ended up going in, and I was like, okay, I made it. Let's. But like now I'm going. Now I'm going in cold. I'm just like, okay. It's warm. I was like, I had to warm back up. I hate doing that already. Right. <laughs> yeah, you lazy. <laughs> so I had to warm back up, and then I was like, "All right, I am. I have like I want to be like because like indoors, I was second team. Mm-hmm. I'm like I want to be a first team All American. Like I'm not right. getting ninth, and I'm not getting. I'm not going to be a second team again. I was like, let's go do something. So like the first throw, I fouled. I was like, all right, that that's okay. Get a little jitters out, and then I talked to McKay. He's like, do that. Like we kind of like talked about like what I was doing at the time, and I went in. I was just like, I just let it go. It didn't feel like anything. Like when you have a good throw, like you know, you like know, like that's good. I was just like, let it go. I was like, that's that's, that's something. Yeah. And it was like seventy two. Like I was over a meter, like PR from the time. I was just going nuts. I was like, I was freaking out. And then that put me in fourth. And then like that's when the two guys jumped. Like uh, the Florida guy jumped me, so I'm in fifth. 
going into the sixth throw, and then Daniel Hall threw ahead of me, so now I'm in six. And I was like, all right, I gotta, like, we gotta keep going. I keep yeah. like, getting juiced up. And I threw like four or five centimeters further, and I was like, I should be incredibly happy right now. Yeah. But like, I was like kind of mad at myself because like, I feel like I could throw farther. Right. Uh, but like, I was like, okay, all American, like sixth place. But like, it was kind of like, I was in fourth, and now I'm in sixth. And I'm like, okay, like it left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth after I left. And I was like, mm-hmm what could I have done to yeah. throw it better? But like like you said, it's it went like 76, 75, 74, 73. Like That's top stupid. four were like over 73, 74 meters. I'm just like, I can't even complain about this. Yeah, but yeah, I, right. I, think, yeah. I think that's good. Like Dentel threw 76 meters. Like, yeah. And then goes 20 plus. And then he, <laughs> shot. Yeah, he doubles the yeah. shot and the hammer. Like who does that? Corey Martin. <laughs> He's the only other one. Was, yeah, there's like, that, like yeah, no one like, really ever does that. Yeah, like, that's, <laughs> Yeah, well, but, I, but that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like you're talking about dudes who are like Freaks. at the top yeah. of their game, right. like who like better than everyone else. Like they're, is that was cool to watch him do that double though. That I was, I think from my my perspective, it's like you know you, then you end up going to USA's again this past year and you threw pretty well, like seventy one something. Yeah. So like, my, like, my third like third or fourth best mark of the year and I got sixth. Right. For, so like not making a final. And then again, I'm I was on the top returning collegian at USA's. Right, and that's where it's like, I don't know if you take that step back, but you're going okay. I just got six at the most intense NCAA competition ever, and then you get six at USA's competing with big guys, and and you in my mind, and I think even when I talked to you at USA's, it was sort of like I I know I can hang with these guys now. Yeah, it was a cool experience like making that. It was like it was the same thing again. I my first two throws. I fouled and I went like sixty something. Mm-hmm. My third throw got me into the final. I was like, "Why do like oh, I always do this to myself?" Yeah, like yeah. I got like I'm all like stressed out. But then like like after the meet, I threw seventy one on my last throw to go from eighth to sixth. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was just like I was just like yeah, I was like sitting there like dude like I it it was cool to be in the final. It's like all right now I'm like one of the guys like yeah. they know who I am like yeah. like I like and I like have like a relationship with these guys now that I've thrown with. Like, and I'm not know. like I'm not like the young kid who like. Why are you here anymore? Right. Yeah, yeah. But they also know that you're bringing the heat too. Yeah. And that's where I think what's cool is like I think it's good that you actually left that NCA comp with a slight bit of sour, you know, sour flavor in your mouth. Where you're like, you know what? Like, I could win this. I could come back and upset some people. I could I could pull something out this you know this coming year. So I think that that's mm. you know maybe some motivation that you have in the back of your mind is yeah is, no it, yeah that's. Like getting six and being all American, like it was awesome. Like probably like one of my favorite experiences athletically ever. Right. But it's just like, okay, there's five more spots ahead of me that I lost yeah. to. Yeah. So like, yeah. what now? What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. And this year is gonna be even crazier because everybody's back from that final except for Rudy, and then Joe Ellis should make nationals this year. So there's another 74 meter guy. Right. And then Gleb. Yeah. 78 meter guy. So there's 10 guys returning over probably gonna be over 72 meters. So what is that like from from your perspective, getting to compete with some of these guys at the Big Ten? You know, is that it's almost like a it's like a little preview yeah. kind of thing. It, it's it's cool because like especially like with the Big Ten, like we had even like Grant, Joe, and Rudy, and me this year all That's over sixty seven, well, all over sixty eight meters. Right, and it's just like you never like I never. And you're in the Big Ten that you don't get a down weekend. Like some some conferences, like you're you're the dude in the conference. Like you're gonna go and win. Yeah. Mm. And like you kind of like you don't have to worry about it. Especially like the Big Ten, like especially like Big Ten and like the SEC, like those conferences, like you have to go in and compete. Like right. you don't you don't have like a week off. So you like it's it's good because you don't you don't get lax in right. like what you're yeah. doing. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's it's cool to compete against the guys who you're gonna see the next two weeks or three weeks if they're at USA's. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know. I think from from my perspective now, it's like you know that that's in the back of your mind as, as when you're training. But I also think like long term, going back to just talking with Lucas and and knowing what he had said when we when we met with him in uh, in Grand Valley and, and just like it's all about technique and fixing your hammer movement and, and you're yeah, still like a baby deer when it comes to this event. Yeah, like, you're like three years trained. That's I, I'm two years. I don't mean like almost I think two years with a four turn. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what's I think, you know I think what's weird from my end is that I don't know why there's not more guys sitting there seeing you and going, Okay, this guy went fifty three, then he went sixty two eighty, then he goes sixty seven, ninety four, and then he goes seventy two. 
what is he doing like post collegiate? Maybe we should come up to State College and learn learn from Lucas. Maybe we should start, you know, training with you, with Lucas. And now all of a sudden, like, because dude, in my mind, you have knowing you as an athlete, you have. I, I believe I believe that you could be a top three guy in 2020, and I think, and I know that's saying a lot, and that's saying it's you know potentially putting a lot of pressure on you, but that's you have I'm, the capability. But like that's where like I'd want to be. Like I right. like I'm not in the sport to, to be just, a top five guy. Like I want to be the guy going to the meets. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I and I, yeah, that's the thing. And it's like it's at some point it's like when are people going to start recognizing? that like what you're doing what david did in the weight last year but then also david being a really good discus thrower and then the javelin guys it's like, like at had, some point yeah. like I, we, had, we had a i mean steph was at yeah, nationals steph goes we had mike, mike Biddle's at nationals right. we had a girl uh she got i think she got 13th at first rounds so right. first one out right so and then we had we had two other guys who were right on the cusp of making it but like it was kind of tough for them because like they had a month they were throwing in a monsoon at first okay. round so it was Literally like five inches of rain in like an hour. Yeah. So like, but like we have guys like, um, we have we have a chance to have guys in like every event like this this right. year go to nationals. And right. So it's like Coach McKay like knows what he's doing. Like he's yeah, yeah. probably one of the best coaches in the NCAA right now. Right. I and guess it, that's where where my question is is like when you go you know after this year obviously it's focus on this year win an NCAA title if you can upset people and, and continue to make that progress that you've made and make that technical progress. And then is, is that the next step? Like I, I you know, like you're looking at 2020, like I want to do something. I want to, I want to cause, I want to bring like create some damage and, and really, really yeah. make an impact. Yeah. No, that's like right now I'm looking to run a house, like starting in the summer for a year. Like I want to, I'm going to be with McKay. Yeah. Like hope, like hope, hopefully i have a chance to make this world team yeah like that i mean that's mm-hmm. definitely the goal this year after especially after usa yeah mm-hmm. yeah like it's like i mean usa isn't so like i'll have um usa like nca is like first week of june but then like usa is this year's until july. the end of july yeah. so like i'll have two months to peak for that meet and train right. for it and figure out what i did wrong and like depending on like where i am right and then i don't make if i don't make that meet like i'm um I'm still gonna. I'm gonna stay up there and train and live there and train with the K until at least trials and then, right. like, we'll see where I, see where yeah. I am th- yeah. at that point. But like, I don't see myself like like, a lot, of, like, like, like a lot. Yeah, no, no, like I'm I'm in it. Like I think, like for me, like if I'm top five at trials, like I'm I'm gonna keep going. Like right. like there's there's no sense in not to. Because I like, think you're stupid if you're not. <laughs> if you don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, I I think if there's like I can only be an athlete for another. Mm-hmm. Eight years, probably, I, like I, nine years. So, like, I, why not do it? Like, if I, I'm I'm on the cusp of being, being able to like have yeah. an opportunity to make it, so why yeah. wouldn't I? And I don't know exactly what your dad would say, but knowing even your dad as an athlete, um, I feel like he like they your parents would be supportive. Yeah, entirely, no, they're super especially... supportive of like like what I want to do. Yeah, they, like they know where you're at, and they, yeah. and your dad was also a post collegiate football player. You know, he played in the. I feel like he played USFL. In the USFL. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's like. He knows, you know that, like, that and he knows what it takes, and he knows like, like he's. He, it's not gonna that's, happen. That's the cool thing, like either. with like like my parents, like they've always been like super like real with like everything. They're not. They they were never once to like, like um, butter me up and like, oh, you're the best. You're like, right. like mm-hmm. one of my earliest memories was like, did you wrestle when like when you're younger? Yeah, yeah. Like you know like like you like win a tournament, you get invited. Like there was a tournament like Ohio, like yeah. or, like a tournament somewhere. I won like one of the tournaments in Oli. And I was like, "Oh, Dad! Like, I got invited to this tournament. Like, let's go." He's like, "I'm not driving to all the way to Ohio to watch you get your ass kicked." Because <laughs> like, cause, like he was realistic. Like, he yeah. never was like, "Oh, you're the best." Like, but like that. Like, I think that's what like, what and like, especially a young kid needs. Like, you need to be realistic with them. Like, hey, yeah. like, yeah, like you're you good. Well. You're good here, yeah. but there's, there's a whole other world. Whole another world out there. Like, like yeah. you need to like you need to work hard and like we always be working. Like, yeah. it was never like. Oh, you did really good here. Like you're the best thing that ever happened to the face of the earth. Right. No, that's good. That's a good yeah. perspective. And like I was, like I was always pushed, and like, like I was never like I was always like they always supported me, like anything I wanted to do, any right. type of like sport I wanted to try, like because like I mean you figure you, my dad put in, my dad, and my mom put in nine, ten years of traveling to baseball tournaments, yeah. like going, like, and then I was like freshman year of high school, like, I want to do track. Like okay, like that's yeah. we'll do it, go that way. Right. But like because like my sister was doing track and she was. She's training with you yeah. and I was like he was like 
okay, maybe like I'll try that and like see what happens. Yeah. But it's but they're super supportive of what I want what I want to do and like I'm incredibly grateful for that. So yeah. I'll have the opportunity to stay in state college and I'll get like a part time job and tra- and be like a volunteer try and be like a volunteer coach with the team and train with Coach McKay because like I think once you find a coach that fits you like you're kind like you're you're kind of dumb to leave that yeah a lot of people like guys like try to go somewhere else and like they don't have that coach with them that they had some success with yeah and I think like <clears throat> if I like, I don't think I would want to leave that it was like yeah it gets cold sometimes. I don't have to train inside, but, like, if you find a coach that fits who you are, like, it, I'd, it why works. would I leave that? Yeah, yeah. So Absolutely I want to stay sure. there until trials, and then, like you said, like, reevaluate where I'm at. And, I mean, if I'm <clears throat> progressing in the right way, like, I'll try and stay there as long as possible. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Especially, uh, I mean, from my perspective, it's, like, that's good for me to hear, too, because it's, like, I know. I think you're capable of that, and I think Trevor. I think you would think that too. Is yeah, that absolutely that you can you can be at that level? And I just think you've got a good support system. Lucas, I think, is a perfect fit as a coach, and I, I just see that continuing to develop over the next two years, where it's like it's going to be like, wow, maybe we should have done what you were doing, you know, and and get on that 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 band, well, get on the bandwagon at some point because I think people are going to start regretting it once 2020 comes. That's me talking trash. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to do the, I want to jump into the, the Red, the red Hot, hot minute. minute. I got a couple questions, but you got, you, should I go first or you? I hope Dane's just like a tiny little, like, <laughs> what, why don't I go <laughs> first? Because you've, I, I only have a couple. Um, you can't want, we can't look at these, Morgan. I can't read your handwriting <laughs> anyway. <laughs> do you know what the Red Hot Minute is, Morgan? I'm assu- is it just like a like I get like a minute per question or something? Well, short like we'll ask just like you, real quick yeah, responses. Real quest, yeah, real real quick. Um, Make sure he's on fire right now. Like, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we gotta put, put flames all around. Him, yeah. Is there any way we can put in the video of him front squatting three fifteen into the? <laughs> Dude, it's on one. It's on That's the one a, where you had. I think junior, it's the video where you have one? your. Uh, I think it's like the same video where you have your five hundred pound. Oh uh, shit! Like yeah, that Gunther bench. Yeah, and I, I was doing like, the floor. Yeah, floor with the window. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like, watch that video a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's two thousand views on YouTube. He's fifteen hundred of them. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm the other five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> All it. right, so let's start it off with. Oh, that's so cool. your two high school events, shot or disc? Which one? Uh, I never liked disc. Shop. I loved shot, but I, I, I had like a love hate relationship with both of them. Like discus, I could almost throw far all the time. I never did it, and then shot put, I kind of threw far, and I, it was. A lot easier to retrieve as well. So that, <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. That's why you're quitting the hammer. <laughs> uh, but the only thing I did hate about the shot was at the old, the original garage was when it would freeze over, like we were talking about earlier, and it would just go through the ice, and you have to like rip apart the ice and like crawl through water and try and <laughs> yeah. find your shot. Well, so so all right, that leads right into my next question: wet sand or mud? So wet, wet, wet sand at the garage yeah. or, or mud at the barn? <laughs> wet, wet sand every day of the week. Like, every, like when it would get wet, I was like, Dane, we should just go back to your parents' house and just like throw over there. It's like, no, like, let's like, Dude, the mud, your garden. The, the, mud, the mud was the worst. Yeah. And then I, like, it was like, I think it was like the second year there. It was like, don't do I'm getting cinder. No. So that never happened. That, I said that was like, always like the promise that yeah. like kept us like throwing basically. Like, and then the one time, no, maybe sometime, maybe sometime. The, the, one time, the one time I showed up, there was like a big truck with like rocks, and I was like, yes, finally. And then like he made like the driveway. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I remember that. But, like, yeah, no, wet sand any day of the week because just mud just got everywhere, all over the circle too. Yeah. So bad. Sand, you just had to like it was just stuck in your shoes for like. Ever, but I'd rather I'd rather have thrown the sand. But like that sector only went out to like fifty seven. Like it was like fifty seven or fifty eight to the, oh, so the to size. the garage. Yeah. No, to the to, uh, the, to that, that wall to that sixty, yeah, yeah, wall. 60 feet. Right. Yeah, yeah, sixty feet, feet to that feet wall. On the right side. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, then this isn't a yes or no question, but what are you gonna do when Jeff breaks your school record? Yes, <laughs> dude. If I if I he's if gonna he, whoop your dude, ass. Dude, he better. <laughs> dude, he better break that yeah, record this better. year. Like he better break. <laughs> like if I have an off weekend, like maybe I'll like. Well, it'll probably be like a Tuesday or Thursday because it dual meets. Or it might be Saturday. Dude, is he should break that record? Yeah. Like, I'll be excited because like it was cool when I broke the record. Uh, Glenn Frederick, the guy who had it from like the seventies or eighties. He threw like forty nine feet, and I was I was so I'm the first high school Fleetwood high schooler to throw fifty, so I broke that record. Oh, and wow. then he he came to a meet 
oh, and like shit. congratulated me. So like, yeah, that's like, awesome. And that's so like really we're cool. like friends on Facebook now. So he, like follows yeah. me and like that'd like, be easy like, to see Jeff. It was easy to see Jeff because like all but like he was like checked the papers like all the time to see if anyone had ever like broken his record and like I came along and like broken. He came to a meet, introduced himself, congratulated me and like. I mean, like we like have like contact every now yeah, and then, like it's, really cool, it's yeah. pretty cool. So like, yeah. it's cool to like now, like because like, like in Fleetwood, I was like, dude, no one's ever gonna come close to that record. Yeah, no. I was like, that like, was Hefe. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah. sixty-five feet. Dude, he better. Or eighty-five. Eighty-five feet. Yeah, that's <laughs> dude, next goal. <laughs> yeah, like he's, like, it's gonna be cool to see because like I, and I was like, like Fleetwood, we don't really put like there's not a lot of athletes that come out. Like every every couple of years, we'll have like athletes that come out like who are gonna be really good, but. um it's cool. Like I'm gonna be able to see it. Like I'll be in the area. Like yeah. I'll, like and like see it happen. See someone break it. Like he's only he's, he's a junior. He's yeah. a junior and he's two he feet away from. Year, yeah. Like I think my indoor PR, my indoor school. Like I don't think I don't know if they count it. Like 58.2 yeah. two is my indoor record, and then 58.9 nine. Is my, he should break it in the next like two weeks. Yeah. Like yeah. through open up with fifty six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's gonna be. It's, I think it's. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Like he's gonna be good. All right. You took two of mine. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, first. Come up with new ones. Beaver or Goodman? Beaver Stadium or Goodman Stadium? Goodman for the memories, because like, <laughs> dude, I went, I went to so many Lehigh games growing up. You're a loser. But be- <laughs> Beaver Stadium for the atmosphere. <laughs> nothing, go. nothing tops Beaver Stadium's atmosphere, especially like a whiteout night game. Yeah. It's yeah. nothing, nothing matches it. But like Goodman, because like growing up, I'm on like the hill. Like yeah, we always yeah. sat on the hill. We played like football, going up and down the hill, or like yeah. we're really muddy. Like we'd like slide. So like Goodman for the memories, Beaver Stadium for the atmosphere. Okay, that's fair. Disco shot. You already asked. How, I was gonna ask this one. I was gonna say similar to that first question, but I'm gonna I'm gonna preface it. You're at a wrestling match, Lehigh or Penn State. Who are you rooting for? Penn State. Okay. Dude, they just okay. drubbed them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they shut them out. I think. Yeah. It was only, terrible. The only person I. I would root for on Lehigh. It was like we had a good family friend, Mitch Minotti. He wrestled. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. So yeah. like I root, I root, root for him against Penn State because like like I knew him. So yeah, like we're yeah. like we're friends. So like I root for him. But Penn State, like you cannot like I'm friends with a couple of the Penn State. Like they're like the nicest guys. And yeah. like They're like I can't not root for them. Like right. they're they, they beat everybody. Like I'd be dumb not to root for. Them. Like <laughs> football or track. Track because I like how it's individualized. Like, if I mess up, it's on me. Yeah. Like, if you're playing football, like, if something goes wrong, like, you can, like, kind of blame someone else even if it was your fault. But, like, track, like, unless you're on, like, a relay and, like, in throwing, like, it's on you all the time. If you mess up, that's your fault. So, yeah. It's on yeah, you. Yeah. But football, because I miss hitting people. <laughs> 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 so, mainly track, but football only because you I like hitting it. people. <laughs> Wings or deepy dough? Wait, like wings over? Yeah, wait. I'm like their number one customer. I, like my fre- my freshman year, my dad will attest to it. I probably was their number one customer. I got I would have to, I, I I ate like two pounds like every Look how week. Excited you it was so excited. it was so good. Wings little. over is so good. No, like I would I'd have like two pounds. Like I'd order like two pounds like twice a week. <laughs> but just just crush it. All right, this one uh, this is just like classic Penn State. I just had to ask this: creamery ice cream or Dairy Queen? Dude, what kind of question is that? Dude, cream or ice cream? Come on. Dairy ask, Queen, come on. I was on. trying to pick somebody else good, but I'm like... Just to breathe. Maybe, maybe I should do like creamery or premise made. That would have been a dude, little premise, bit... Dude, premise made is pretty good. Really premise, good. premise made is really good. <laughs> All right, that's good. Morgan, thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, awesome being here. Yeah, I think we're, we're excited to see where you're going. And, and Dude, I'm excited to see where you guys are going. It's, oh, yeah. It's the third, third, third training facility, facility I've been in. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you're pretty much almost all outgrown it. Like, yeah, we'll see. It's, it's exciting. Yeah. All right. Peace. Later. <laughs>